Hey guys, welcome back. Happy New Year. It is January 4th, so we're four days into 2016. Does it feel the same as 2015? Currently, yes. So since it's 2016, you know that it's going to be my yearly favorites. I usually skip um, a January favorites, I think. I skip one of them and do a yearly favorites. Usually my yearly favorites are pretty long just because I'm talking about things that I just love. Everything that I like, love, and it gets really long and this year I decided to try to just stick to things that I just absolutely love because there are tons of things that I like. There's tons of things that I love too, let's be completely honest, but I tried to keep it down to just things that I was super loving in 2015 and I'll probably love forever and ever and ever. I've been playing with makeup for a really long time now, so I think the more that you play with it and experiment with it, you start to collect things that you know that you're just gonna love forever and ever. So I'm gonna share with you guys my 2015 beauty favorites. I'm strictly sticking to beauty. If you guys want me to do like a skincare and hair, I will do that separately in another video so this video we are strictly sticking to beauty so I hope you guys had a wonderful New Year's Eve I spent New Year's Eve in Jersey with Carly and Brett at her new place so stunning and it was really fun we did a pajama party like everybody was in pajamas the boys were all wearing like matching pajama bottoms and we of course had a full face on cuz what's better than having a full face and your sweatpants on <laughs> It's actually cold today in Florida, so I'm excited about that. But like I was saying, I thought it was gonna be cold. Like I thought it was gonna be freezing cold in New Jersey because, I don't know, let me see what it is outside right now. And I could put on like a turtleneck and some Uggs, but we won't go there. <laughs> but I just wanna see how cold it is outside because I'm gonna tell you guys and you guys that live up north that actually have winters. I don't think Florida has winters. We just have cold days. It's 63 out. <laughs> So it was around like 40 or so in Jersey, but I was loving it. It just feels like, I feel like the air just smells better when it's cold out. But anyway, we had a blast. I did vlog, so I'm gonna try to get that vlog edited and up some, huh? I'm gonna try to get that vlog edited and up sometime this week. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into the 2015 favorites. You know what I need to get for 2016? I need to get my nameplate back because I just feel so naked without it. If you've watched my vlogs, you know that I broke my Nicole necklace. Remember the video that I did like burgundy and nudes and I had like a burgundy like turtleneck kind of on? Well, when I went to go take it off, I just bloop, popped the necklace right off and I was like, bah. So I need to get my Nicole nameplate back for 2016. Okay. I'm just trying to think if I want to tell you guys any other stories. Nope. Okay, jumping into the favorites. I'm going to kind of go, I like to always start kind of in the order of how I apply things on my face, but then I just think that I just start grabbing things. So I am going to try to give you guys my favorites in the order that I apply them to my face. So let's hope I can stay on track with that. And there's just a Rice Krispie sitting here and I really want to eat it. So let's go ahead and start with prepping the face. That's a super important step in makeup if you want it to last all day long, if you want to protect your skin, if you're wearing like a full coverage foundation because by prepping your skin and applying moisturizers and primers and stuff, you're kind of blocking the foundation from absorbing into your skin itself. It's just kind of sitting on top of the moisturizers and primers. So of course, an all time favorite is the Max Fix Plus. This is the rose scented one, which was limited edition, which I'm sad about because I don't really like regular Fix Plus but I do like the rose one so I just use this before I do my makeup and after I do my makeup before to kind of put a little bit more moisture into my skin if it's feeling more dry and then after to kind of get rid of any kind of powderiness what and then to get rid of any kind of powderiness on the face so it's great for before and after skin prep I have a little bit of a cold well, I don't even know if it's cold it might just be allergies but I want to rip off my nose basically. Next is the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Gel. I love, love, love this stuff. I need to start using again. This is only a, um, I think this is like a sample size. Um, you know the little thing in Sephora when you're checking out the danger zone, I like to call it, because it has all kinds of mini things that you just want to grab, things that you really don't need. Um, you need this in your life, though. This was in there. So this is the Dramatically Different Moisturizing Gel, and it's for combination oily to oily skin. And I love this. It absorbs super quick into your face. It is 
It absorbs super quickly into the skin so you can move on and do your makeup so you don't have to wait a long time. That's what I look for in moisturizers that I put on before I do my makeup. I like them to absorb quickly because I gotta get things going. Like I gotta put on a full face. I don't have time to be waiting five minutes for my moisturizer to sink into my skin. So I really, really love this. It moisturizes, it hydrates. It hydrates your skin really well and it absorbs quickly into the skin so you can keep it moving. My nose hurts so bad. Next is the Too Faced Hangover X, which I'm not even sure if it's Hangover X or if it's Hangover RX. I'm still not sure. This is a replenishing facial primer. Now, even though it says primer on it, I would strictly use it as a moisturizer before I put on my makeup. One, because it absorbs, I'm sorry. Again, one, because it absorbs quickly into the skin. It has coconut water, electrolytes, and probiotics, and it's silicone free. So you can just use this as a primer, but since I have larger pores on my face, I just like to use this as my moisturizer beforehand because it hydrates really well, it smells good, it's really light, and it absorbs quickly into the skin which like I just said, you know that's what I look for. And let me just pull this one up right now. This is the Marc Jacobs Invisible Undercover Perfecting Coconut Face Primer. So long. And again, it says primer, but I strictly use it as a moisturizer. I think these two are basically identical to each other. Like I just wanna actually pump this out onto the back of my hand and this out on the back of my hand just to see if one's a little heavier or a little lighter. But I basically think, no. No, they're like identical to each other. So either one, they're both coconutty. They just hydrate. Like you can see, my hand just looks super hydrated already. So um, the Marc Jacobs Coconut Primer and the Hangover RX are basically super similar to each other. Basically the same thing, just different packaging. Um, I do like them both equally just because they are the same. I don't know how many times I can say the same thing. Um, let's just put a forewarning out there right now that I'm probably going to be like, I love this. This is super cute. Oh my god. Because we are talking about my favorites here. So super similar. Both do a great job in hydrating the face. Again, they are primers, but I use them to moisturize my skin before I put on my actual primers. Yeah. One more um, moisturizing primer that I like to use. This is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. It, it smells really good. It has like a really fresh fragrance to it. And it's a little on the thicker side, but it hydrates the skin so beautifully. It gives such a nice base for your makeup application. You would think when you first touch it that it would have kind of like um, a little bit of a greasy residue to it, but it doesn't. It just dries immediately and there's no stickiness, no greasiness. It's just a really nice base for your face. Uh, it's a face base. Of course it's a nice base for your face. Moving on to actually priming my skin. You guys know that I was obsessed. I mean, I still am. I used it in... I used it the other day and I hadn't used this. Okay, let me tell you what it is before I start talking about it, right? This is the Make It Forever Skin Equalizer. This is the smoothing primer. I believe there's around six or eight different primers from Make It Forever. They all come in these tubes. They're skin equalizers. I was obsessed with this when I got it. I thought it was the best thing ever. Before that, I was using the Smashbox Pore Minimizer, and then before that, I think it was like the Benefit um, Pore Professional, which I haven't used in forever. I probably would use it now and be like, why did I stop using you? I don't know, that one was always a little greasy to me though, so maybe not. Anyways, was obsessed with this. It fills in pores very, very well. The only thing that turned me off about this sometimes was I noticed that like, you know like when you have dead skin on your face and it kind of rolls off? I felt like this would do that to me sometimes. And I don't know if it's because I didn't moisturize well enough or I put too much of this on that it would kind of flake off my face. So that's the only kind of thing that would bum me out about this. It didn't happen all the time. It only happens sometimes. Loved this for a super long time this year until I found this guy. <laughs> this is the Dr. Brandt Pore Refiner Primer and it's called Pores No More. Yeah, Pores No More. I don't know what it is about this one. This one is for oily. This one is for oily. La, 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 la. This one is for oily combination skin. This is great to wear if you have no makeup on. Like when I would wear no makeup and I would try to wear this, like I felt like you could see it on my face. This you can't see on your face. It's way thinner than this pore filler is. It's more like I don't know, like creamy. 
it doesn't do any of that weird like flake offness I just think this is the best like pore filler that I've ever used and I've used a ton because I've talked about it before I have larger pores in like this little cheek region of my face because I thought it was because I didn't take off my makeup when I first started wearing makeup and I feel like that could have had an issue with it but I also learned that pores are hereditary so if your mom has large pores you're gonna have large pores or if anybody in your family has large pores you can inherit that from them it just can be in your genes so I just figured that out not that long ago and I was like oh and then my last skin prep is my best damn lip mask I can't live without it I have to moisturize my lips we all know that liquid lips and matte lips have been so in this year I think Everybody and their mama came out with a liquid lip this year, um, but they were super drying on me. They would like flake off my lip and I just hated them forever. Like I couldn't wear them. As you see, I have one on now today. It's because I have my lip mask underneath and it just keeps my lips super hydrated and it makes it so much more comfortable for me to actually wear a liquid lip. So if you have trouble with liquid lipsticks or matte lipsticks or anything like that, you find them too drying and uncomfortable and just, you know, you get like the you know what I'm talking about, that part right there that starts to flake off, try some kind of lip mask. If you don't want to try my lip mask, maybe try the Bite Beauty lip mask and just put something hydrating underneath your lips before you put on a liquid lip and I promise you it will make a world of difference. And then you can enjoy wearing all these liquid lipsticks that are like, all over the place. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to foundations. First, of course, I'm gonna mention the L'Oreal True Match. I'm not gonna talk too much about it because I've been talking about L'Oreal True Match forever and ever and ever. One of the best foundations I've ever used. It's super inexpensive from the drugstore, huge color range, so you're definitely gonna be able to find your color selection in it. Um, this is N3, I wear N3, W6, W5, N4, like I wear a bunch of different colors in this foundation because I self tan, so I'm usually always 50 shades of tan, I'm always a different color. Like this, this color right here, it's not real. It's an illusion. It gives you a really healthy looking dewy skin. So this has always been like my holy grail. I will never leave L'Oreal True Match. I just keep going back and back and back. It's just, it's just the bomb. Next is another great healthy looking skin foundation. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This is in the color 6.5. Um, they told me at the counter before that Luminous Silk isn't really great for people with oily skin, but I find no problems with it. I like the dewy look. Like, I don't like anything matte. I don't like matte foundations. I don't like matte powders. I don't... Matte powders, that kind of was like an oxymoron. Like, it's a powder, of course it's gonna be matte. But I don't like matte foundations. I just think that it makes me look chalky and not youthful. This foundation just sits really well on the skin and just gives, like the title says, like it's called Luminous Silk. Like it makes you look luminous. It makes your skin look healthy and glowy and dewy, which is what I look for in a foundation. And it also has a really nice coverage. I am in either all foundation or no foundation like I want full coverage or I'm not wearing any makeup that day like because to me I don't find the point in wearing like a sheer foundation like what what is that like you can still see everything like just don't wear any makeup at all so it does have a really nice coverage to it you can build the coverage along with um, the L'Oreal True Match love 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 luminous silk just the name luminous silk like you, that makes you want to put it on your face Luminous Silk, give it to me. <laughs> Another favorite this year has been the Cogendo Aqua Foundation. Love, love, love this. This is in the color 143. I have 143 and 123 that I usually mix together. 143, can that not be the most perfect color for me ever? More when I'm on the tan side and 123 when I'm more on the paler side of the spectrum. But Aqua Foundation, again, it's going to make you look luminous and dewy and just radiant. All of my foundations are pretty much the same. They kind of just give you that healthy looking skin that I look for in a foundation. Coverage is great. It is an HD foundation. And Cogendo foundations have no artificial colors, fragrance, petroleum-based mineral oils, paraben, or alcohol in them. So another great foundation. And you can find Cogendo uh, foundations on Sephora. I don't think they sell them in store, but you can find them on Sephora.com. And then my last favorite foundation for 2015 <laughs> is the MAC Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. Now, even though I say... I like all makeup or no makeup at all. I still do like natural makeup looks. Like sometimes Jeremy's like, wow, your skin looks so good with no makeup on. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I have a full face on. I just don't have any eye makeup on. Like it's very easy to deceive a boy. If you don't have any eyelashes or your eyebrows on or anything, but like I'll have a full face of foundation. I'll have concealer. I'll have a contour. I'll have highlight. And he'll think that I have no makeup on. I'm like, do you, do you really think that I look like this? 
<laughs> so this is what I love this foundation for. Um, I only can apply this foundation with my fingers. I don't like how it looks with a brush or a beauty blender. I actually just have to put it in my fingers and like work it into my skin. But then you have almost full coverage with this foundation, but it still looks like your skin. Like I fool Jeremy all the time when I have this foundation on. He'll be like, wow, your skin looks so good. I'm like, I have on foundation. He's like, oh, I can't even tell. I'm like, good. That's the point. Oh, look, it says on the back, apply directly to face or body, blend with finger, sponge or appropriate foundation brush. So maybe I'm not using the appropriate foundation brush. Okay, let's keep everything together. You got a lot of shit on this table. <laughs> I thought I wasn't recording this whole time. I looked down and I didn't see the red line. I was like, ah! I really just had a mini breakdown. Still eyeballing this Rescue 3 g So I was really like up in the air about talking about like my favorite eyeshadows just because I use a lot of loose like individual shadows. Um, I have all the Anastasia ones, so I use a lot of those. So I mainly just wanted to mention one palette that you'd be able to get and then another palette that was limited edition but you can still get the individual colors because I find myself always reaching for these two palettes. So the first one is the Shade and Light palette from Kat Von D. Love, love, love the... oh. Come on, girl. For every day, neutrals are the way to go. So love, love, love the shade and light palette. The colors are really blendable. And the way that it's set up is supposed to be like four little quads. So you're supposed to use these like in conjunction with each other. But obviously, I just use them however I'd like. These are like my favorite kind of colors. These like earthy colors. They're just a really great everyday palette. You're always going to have a use for it. And then the other one is the Amrizi um, palette. Now this one has been out for quite a while now, but I always find myself going for this palette mainly for the colors Caramel and Morocco, which are the two down here. And of course, Glisten and clearly Vanilla since it hit Pan down there. But you can get these individual shadows from Anastasia if you just want to make your own Amrizi palette. So it's nice that they offer all the shadows individually. They were like my favorite colors to use in the crease for a while there. I was like only using these shadows. So you can't get the actual palette, but you can get the eyeshadow. So I will have the favorite eyeshadows listed in the bottom bar. Um, I just wanted to mention the palette because this is usually what I take with me when I travel just because it's so small. Okay, let's talk about a few liners, of course. These are the best eyeliners ever as well. These are the NYX liquid liners. I have it in matte and vinyl. Matte, of course, is going to be a matte line and vinyl is going to have a little more of a sheen to it. I prefer to use the vinyl when I don't have any um, eyeshadow on my eyes just so that it really like pops the liner and has like a little bit of um, sheen to it. So sheen looks a little glossy. And then the matte one just is like great for every day. You have a nice control over the brush. And if you have trouble with liquid liner, try to stabilize your elbow on a table or something while you're doing it so that your line will be a lot more precise as opposed to having your elbow just like floating around in the air while you're trying to draw like a really small line across your eye. Um, love the brush, super small so you can get a nice flick at the end of your wing. And yeah, super inexpensive. You can find these at Ulta. And then last but not least for liner is the Girlactic, what is this? Precise Eyeliner Marker. Now usually I'm not a fan of markers like this because I feel like I could never get enough product out when I needed it. Like if I press too hard, I'd make the line too wide. But this is so, like this barely has, like I'm barely putting pressure on my hand, like on the brush and it just comes out so nice. I don't know what it is, but this is the best marker eyeliner that I've ever used. And you can find this on Girlactic. I only think you can get Girlactic online. I'm not sure if they sell it in stores anywhere, but this is the bomb. The bomb. It's just, this brush is so nice. Like, you can just draw little tattoos on yourself with it. Nice. Rice Krispie Treat. So moving on to lashes, I am a drugstore lash lover, so I'm mainly going to talk about some drugstore lashes and then just one pair of more high-end lashes. So Salon Perfect lashes are one of my favorites. I love the 614s and I love the 615s. 615s are like finding a unicorn in the drugstore. You will be on the hunt for these lashes, I'm telling you. They look super similar to the lashes that I'm wearing today, even though these are more of a high-end lash. These are House of Lashes Siren lashes, but it's basically basically the same lash as the 615 lash. These I just love so 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 much. When you first look at them you're kind of like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to love this lash. 
but it's just so perfect. Every person that I try to get to try it, they like are obsessed with it and that's all they want to wear. And then 614s are more of a wispy looking lash. Again, they look kind of intense when you look at them. You may have to cut them down because they're more of a longer lash. You may have to cut them to size your eye. But I just love how natural and flirty and wispy these lashes look. So two of my all-time favorites. I will never leave them. I have so many pairs of these lashes. It's kind of ridiculous, but I love lash. <laughs> And then these are Ardell Wispy Lashes, which are similar to the 614 lashes, but I wanted to mention these because I do love the natural wispy lash, but this isn't the lash that I wanted to tell you guys about. The Demi Wispy Lash, it says natural on it like this, the packaging looks like this, it'll just say Demi Wispy instead of just Wispy best natural lash of life. You guys usually ask me what's a great everyday lash to wear and the Ardell Demi Wispies are a great, great everyday lash. It's not too long, it's super short, it just kind of thickens up your lash and just makes it look more full in volume. If you wanna go for the Wispies, just the natural Wispies, it's gonna give you kind of the same effect, it's just these are a little bit longer than the Demi Wispies. I wish I had a pair to show you guys because they are seriously the greatest lashes ever. Love. Again, it's 615s, 614s, wispies, and demi wispies. And then for a dramatic lash, I love these. I was trying forever not to use them, but I was like, what are you going to do? You're just never going to use these lashes. These are the House of Lashes Iconic Lash. Um, it's just the most perfect dramatic lash you will ever wear. It's not too long to where it's like up to your eyebrow because we've all been there before. <laughs> but it's like pointy, like it's like a sharp lash. Like if somebody came up to you, you could cut them with your lash. It has just enough volume. It looks great with any kind of makeup look. I just love these lashes. Anytime I'm doing like a full face and I want like the perfect lash and I don't want to go searching through my drawer, I always go and grab an iconic lash because it's just the best lash I've ever worn ever for like a more high-end lash and not like a natural lash like this looks like you're wearing lashes and I know people are concerned about like mink lashes and stuff House of Lashes lashes aren't mink they are synthetic so they're cruelty free it says it on the back it's just a high quality synthetic blends that are handcrafted to perfection and they're multi-layered for a more dramatic look now if you're more on the beginner side of makeup these may be a little difficult for you to put on because lashes like this have an invisible band on them so they're really easy to maneuver and wiggle around these lashes have a super thick band on them so they're not as easy to maneuver but you can get them to work I'm just letting you know that if you're more on the beginner side of starting to do your makeup start with lashes like this so that you get comfortable and you know how to put on a lash before you just go right into like a thick banded lash because then you're just gonna you're gonna piss yourself off <laughs> like I've just been talking so much I'm cold too my shoulders cold okay so let's talk about Concealers. The first one is going to be from NYX and this is a dark circle concealer. So this is a correcting concealer and as you can see it has a little bit of an orange tinge to it. It's not a super orangey concealer which I like because most color correcting concealers are orange. Like orange, orange, orange and as you can see this one is more like a peachy orange which works better for me. I think I talked about this in like a vlog or something like this. Don't really love it. Don't really love it. This is the MAC Studio Conceal Corrector Duo, and I was using the orange for underneath the eyes. Maybe I, I need to play with it a little more. I've only used it like twice or so, but so far, not loving it as much as I thought it would. But love this dark circle corrector. So, I have it on today, and what I also like about it is that it's super light, so you can layer it with your concealer because you don't want to put like a bunch of stuff underneath your eyes because then it's just too much product sitting underneath your eyes and then it can work against you where it can just start to look a little more creasy because you have so many products underneath your eyes. So this is really thin. It's a really nice peachy salmon color that eliminates the bluish tones underneath your eyes. I only use this sometimes when I feel like I haven't gotten enough sleep and my eyes do look super dark underneath there because concealer will cover, because concealer will pretty much, because concealer will, bleh. <laughs> Maybe I need to eat this White Krispie Treat for energy. You know what? I'm going in. Oh, I don't want to mess up my lipstick though. Well, I cannot resist him any longer. I don't remember I was talking about that. Rice Krispie was too good. <laughs> oh. 
I can get away with just wearing concealer underneath my eyes. It'll pretty much cover my dark circles. But I do notice that throughout the day, if I don't have a orange color correcting concealer underneath my eyes, that I can start to see the darkness and the bluer tones start coming through. And this helps to keep it bright and light underneath there all day long. So again, I don't use it all the time. I only use it when I feel like my dark circles are extra dark. Another NYX favorite is the HD Photogenic Concealer. Is that what it's called? HD Photogenic Concealer. High definition, mineral enriched, formulated without talc, talc and parabens. This is in the color CW03. And I like this one as well because it has kind of like a peachy tone to it, which really helps to brighten up the underneath which really helps to brighten the under eye area. Love the consistency, love the creaminess. I prefer a more lightweight concealer that is still full coverage. Like this is way too thick and creamy for me. So I like them to be really easy to blend. I don't really want to have to like do a lot of a, lo a lot of smearing and rubbing underneath my eyes because it's so sensitive. So this one is really great coverage and really creamy and light and easy to blend out. Another drugstore favorite concealer is the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I used to be so obsessed with this concealer like forever and ever and ever ago. I think this is great to use under your eyes to conceal your blemishes. You can use this all over your face as a really bomb foundation, which I've used before in a pinch and it looks just as good as any foundation I've used. This is in the color Light. Really easy to blend out, really lightweight concealer, like super lightweight, which I enjoy. It doesn't feel heavy on the face, but it still gives you coverage to cover blemishes and dark under eye circles. So if you're looking for a bomb drugstore concealer, try the Fit Me or the NYX. I don't know which I prefer more, the NYX or the Maybelline. Probably more so the NYX still because of the color. The color is just so bomb, the CW03, so bomb. So then my last one is the Makeup Forever Lift Concealer, a little more on the high-end spectrum of the concealer range. <laughs> but love, love, love this concealer. Love the color of it. It's in number three. Um, I've seen people use this concealer and say that it lifts underneath their... Hold on, let me adjust my light. So I have seen other people use this concealer and say that it provides a lift underneath their eyes, which I've never noticed any kind of lifting action. It is a lift concealer. Or they say it like tightens underneath their eyes. Never experienced any of that. I just really like the blendability, the coverage, and the color of the concealer, which is what you should be looking for in a concealer, if anything. Blendability, coverage, and color. <laughs> so let's move on and talk about bronzers. The bronzer that I have been using just all over like as a cheek color is this bronzing powder from MAC in Refined Gold. It does have shimmer to it and I don't know, I just think that it looks so great. I use it to blend out any kind of harsh contour that I have because if you use something with shimmer in it, it's going to blend a lot easier than if you were to just use something that's more matte. So absolutely loving this. It is a little more on the orangey side though, so keep that in mind if you're more like fair toned. It is, it does give off more of an orange color than um, like a brown actual shadow color so just keep that in your head. Next is the Marc Jacobs Mirage filter. This is light filtering. It's so long. Oh no it's not that long. It's just a light filtering contour powder and it's this guy right here. Still to this day I've never used this color here. Let me let me just see what this is like. Let me let me see because it's just so yellow I feel like. Oh very brightening though. I just have a little bit on this brush. Oh, that's nice. But I mainly use this palette for that bronzer right there for contouring because as you can see it has a nice like grayish undertone to it. Nothing too orangey. For contouring you do want to stick to colors that kind of don't have any orange tones in them because our shadows don't have orange tones in them so you don't want your contour to look too orangey. Obviously the shade and light palette is going to be in my 2015 favorites because this is just like one of the greatest things ever. I love these contour colors. Every single one of them I use. Um, it just depends on the color of my skin that day. <laughs> Or if um, I just want to deepen it up. These colors are great. As you can see, they have no orangey tones to them at all. They're very cool. And as well, these brightening colors for underneath the eyes or highlighting are just out of this world as well. Really creamy, velvety, smooth, really easy to blend. Great for beginners. Great for people that have been contouring their faces. I mean, since contouring has been around. Um, and I really love to use the orangey tone under the eye to even cancel out the blue even more. That's what I have under my eyes today. So had to mention it. Best contour palette of life, in my opinion. 
So that's basically what I use for bronzing and contouring. You see, I am, I'm trying to keep it to a minimum here, guys. I'm not trying to just tell you about every single product in the world. Okay, so for face setting powder is what I set my face with. First, what I set my under eyes with is always the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. This is what I set with. I don't bake with it. I just set with it. Best setting powder I've ever used. I think I have to sneeze. <laughs> oh, I thought my lash was going to come off. 2016 goals do my hair more. <laughs> Secret Brightening Powder by Laura Mercier is what I use to set my concealer with underneath my eyes. I can just get away with just using this on its own, but I usually will go back in after I've done all my makeup and I'll hit it with a little bit of the Shade and Light Contour Palette, the highlighting powders, just to brighten this area more. But I find that this is really the only setting powder that I use that really helps me from not creasing throughout the day. It is really finely milled. It's so soft and gentle underneath your eyes. It's just like the best stuff I've ever used. I used to use, I'll show you the other ones I used to use. I used to use the Ben Nye Cameo Powder under my eyes and I used to use the Makeup Forever Super Matte Loose Powder. Super matte, I don't want anything super matte underneath my eyes. I just felt like these two were just too drying underneath there for me. So Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder is where it's at. And then I'll go back in, like I said, and brighten it up with some kind of highlighting powder underneath there. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some highlight now, yee! I think this is the most products that I have to talk about. Okay, first one, I'm just gonna go in order of how they're sitting here, no particular order. This is the Laura Geller ugh, Gilded Honey. I can't open it, the struggle of having long nails. <laughs> um, so this is Gilded Honey, so gorgeous, so creamy. It's a baked gelato swirl illuminator. So since it's baked, you can probably use this wet or dry. I've never tried to use it um, wet. But it's just like a golden, super gold highlight. Absolutely love it. I'm gonna put a little bit on my nose right here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You can find that at Ulta. Next is the Mary Luminizer. I'm just going through these because they're all highlights. They're all used, they're the same thing. I can't open it. Next is Mary Luminizer from The Balm. Um, I find The Balm at um, Kohl's random right but they have all the balm products there and this one is really nice too this is like one of my first highlights ever was the balm and it's just like more of like a pale like champagne -y. great for like lighter skin tones then we have the makeup forever compact shine on this is such like an interesting um highlight to me because it's more of a matte highlight it's not super super shimmer shimmery it's not super shimmery it's just like adds like whiteness like can you see that? Like, I can see it so good, but I don't feel like you guys can see it. So like I said, it's not going to be shimmery. It's just going to highlight, which I think is really, really cool. I don't know if they still sell these. Search for them. It's so bomb. It's such like a cool highlight. Um, if you can't find this one, I feel like the Laura Mercier Baked Matte Highlight has like a similar feel to this, but this one is just so amazing. And then the two that I constantly use are from Anastasia, and these are the Illuminators, and I use So Hollywood and Starlet. I use these nonstop. I always use them in conjunction with each other, just I just like how it looks more so together than they do like individually. One is a more golden highlight and one is a more pearly white highlight. So this one is So Hollywood and this one is Starlet. Just love them, love, love, love them together. So those are my favorite highlights. Highlights run the world now. I feel like everyone's just drenched in them. <laughs> I'm not mad at them. Not mad at that at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about lips, which is going to be the last thing that we talk about because I just feel like I've been sitting here talking forever. So let's do lip liners first. They're all from MAC, not on purpose. It's just I like MAC lip liners. They work really well for me. So I have Boldly Bear, Spice, Swirl, Stone, and Soar. So these are like my go-to lip colors. I use them for everything. I must align my lips if I apply any kind of colored lipstick. I don't know why, I just feel like if I don't, I'll draw it all the way up to my nostril. So it really helps me, it's like I'm coloring, so it helps me to stay in the lines. So again, we have Store, Store. So again, we have Soar, Stone, Whirl, Spice, and Boldly Bare. I feel like if you have these five lip liners, it's all you really need in your life, truly. Okay, so let's talk about some lips. Let's mention the Anastasia liquid lips first. I have five colors here, and they're pretty much all in the same color range. Really? <laughs> the first one is Veronica. Then we have Dusty Rose. I have Trust Issues, which is the color that I have on my lips right now. 
It looks a little lighter in there than it does here. And then we have Pure Hollywood and Sepia. So these are my five favorite like go-to lipsticks. You can never go wrong with these colors. I like to mix and match them. Like I like to mix Pure Hollywood and Sepia together. I like to mix Veronica and Trust Issues together. So I just like to make my own combination of colors. But these five, like out of, out of all the lipsticks, and I stood up there for a while and I just wanted to pull colors that I have used over and over again. So these were my top five favorite picks from Anastasia for 2015. So I do really love the formula of the Anastasia ones. They never really flick off on me but I do wear a lip mask underneath all liquid lips so I feel like that does make like a huge difference in the wearability and the comfortableness of a liquid lip so but love these five so favorite and then I have two dose of colors we have stone which is so in that family and rose rose is a gloss and stone is a liquid lip so love these two. I do wear them together. I like to wear rose over stone, but I do wear stone on its own. And rose is just a great like everyday color. I think I mentioned it to you guys before, but I just wish I could get like more color out of the tube. Or maybe it's just like running out. Maybe that's my issue. <laughs> and then one Jeffree Star color, which you know what color is going to be. It's androgyny. Love this color. It's just like the perfect mauve like sexy color. Like I just feel so glam when I wear this look. So you guys loved it when I wore it. Another great like formula in liquid lips too is Jeffree Star. And then just three lipsticks. The first one is from House of Dolls. And as you can see, I usually wear, ew, I don't know if you guys can see that on there, but I usually wear this with stone lip liner and I just love like the contrast of the two. It's just a nice like nudie pinky color that looks great with any kind of darker lip liner in it. I like the whole ombre look of it. That's basically what these lipstick, three lipsticks are. I use them when I do like an ombre lip. I'll do like a dark lip liner, which tends to usually be either sore or stone, and then a lighter color in the middle. This one is from Melt Cosmetics, and this one is Sext, which is a super like nude, pale pink color, but again, looks so good with like a darker lip liner. And then always blend them together like just don't draw a dark line and put the light in the middle and then last is myth which is like a classic favorite but never go out of style nude lip that i absolutely love and then i usually i was gonna I, I had a bunch of glosses but really the only gloss that i usually ever wear is nars turkish delight it doesn't matter what lip color i have on what the combination is i can usually always make nars turkish delight work and i like this because my lips stay glossy for a long time the only thing I don't like about this is it smells horrible. Like, it smells hor- Let me smell it. Let me just make sure. Like, what is that? Why does it smell so bad? But I love the actual color, and I love the texture, and I love that my lips stay glossy pretty much the whole time that I have the gloss on. Unless I'm eating or drinking. You know, obvi. <sighs> So I think those were all my favorites from 2015. I don't know if it seemed like a lot, but it seemed like a lot to me. I didn't mention mascaras because I really only use two mascaras I've been using forever and ever. It's Voluminous Carbon Black and Aroma Lash Accelerator. But other than that, I don't think that I have anything else to tell you guys. I'm going to edit this video, I'm going to edit a vlog, and then... I should be back very soon for you guys. So I love you guys. I hope 2016 is your best year yet. I can't wait to see what we do together. And I love you guys so, so, so much. So, 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 so much. I love you guys so much. So that is it for this video. I don't think I have anything else to say except I love you. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.